بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على النبي الأمي برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين with Allah's fadl and karam alhamdulillah we learn about the best of people and subhanallah every sahabi we go into we just realize that every one of them are so special we sometimes have a favorite and then we learn more about them and we unravel another favorite and another favorite and then we just start realizing a fraction of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran al-Kareem وَكُلَّ وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الْحُسْنَى Every sahabi, every one of them Allah has promised Jannah meaning the highest of stages Al-Husna So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to emulate them The sahabi is one whom Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praised and said that when he brought Iman the first time it was Iman, it wasn't just Islam Aslam nas Others become Muslim first after effort, after realization, after some time in the deen where they sacrifice for Allah. Then the level of Iman comes. The Sahabi brought Iman right from the beginning. Aslam al Nas wa amana Amr ibn al As radiallahu ta'ala an. He hails from the Banu Saham clan. Hazrat Amr. Bin Aas, Bin Wa'il, Bin Hashim, Bin Su'id, Bin Saham. And he links with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa at the forefather Ka'b, Bin Ka'b, Bin Lu'ay. He hails from the Quraysh clan. So he's known as Qurashi al-Sahmi. He had two brothers from his mother. His mother was Nabigha bin Tuharmala. And his brothers from her were Amr bin Athatha being one. And the other being the famous Man who took Islam far and wide for Allah's sake. He is none other than Uqba bin Nafi' rahimahullah. So the achievements of Amr is really amazing. What he achieved for Islam, the countries he brought to Islam. For example, Oman. He single-handedly brought that entire country to Islam. Everyone embraced Islam. Imagine Palestine. He was the conqueror of Palestine. Imagine Egypt. He conquered Egypt and brought the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's so much to learn from this great Sahabi from the time he was born till the time he left this world in the year 43 Hijri in the month Shawwal. There's so much to learn. He's known for his wit and intelligence. Whoever describes him, whether it's Allama ibn Kathir, Hafiz ibn Kathir, or it's Shamsuddin Dhahabi, they all mention he was Dahiya to Quraysh, the man of wit and intelligence. He was a man who knew the world. He was a man who was used as a parable in intelligence, prudence. He was a parliamentarian and he was an emissary that Quraysh sent when they needed important matters resolved. His father detested Islam and was amongst those who mocked the Muslims. So, being close to his father on behalf of Quraysh, he was even sent by Quraysh to meet Najashi of Abyssinia, to converse with him and convince him to send the Muslims back to Mecca. The Meccans couldn't bear it that the Muslims were now living peacefully under the rule of a just king. And Amr could not take defeat. He went. He spoke to Najashi. Najashi then summons the Muslims. Allahu Akbar, Allah's help with the people of Iman and Deen. And they responded honestly. And they responded wisely. As the Ja'far bin, Ja'far bin Abi Talib, anhu, the spokesperson of the Muslims, on behalf of all the Muslims, responded to the king and explained to him the beauty of Islam. And he explained their own condition. What was their condition as Arabs prior to Islam and how Islam changed them and made them better people. And then he recited verses of the Quran Kareem, chapter 19. And Najashi was so emotioned by the da'wah and the tilawa of Hazrat Ja'far that his eyes flowed in tears. But then Amr returned and he was defeated. But then he met Najashi the next day saying, but you don't realize what they say about Jesus, Isa alayhi salam. They say he's a slave. When Hazrat Ja'far was summoned again, he then was questioned 
And he says, yes, he is Allah's slave, he is Allah's word, and he is Ruhullah, meaning Allah commanded that his soul be blown into his mother, Hazrat Maryam, without any male intervention. So yes, he is an honorable servant of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he is Allah's slave and servant. Hazrat Ja'far responded honestly. And Najashi realized that what Hazrat Ja'far is saying is correct. And he picked up a little splinter, a small stick and said, exactly what you said about Hazrat Isa alayhi salam is correct. And that is our belief. Those of us who believe in the true Isa alayhi salatu wasalam and believe in the truth about Isa alayhi salatu wasalam concur with what you have said, O Ja'far. And then he turned to the two emissaries of Quraysh and said, you have to return. I'll never hand them over to you. They will stay under me. They came to me for protection. I will never desert them. And then he said to the Muslims, if anyone has to harm you, you just tell me about it. And from that time, the Muslims shared a close bond with Najashi. And they then became the means of Najashi's Islam. Allahu Akbar. So the Sahaba, they practiced deen and propagated deen in this country of Africa, East Africa, Abyssinia. Amr lived his life. He went back to Mecca. He was sad about the fact that he was defeated, but he started pondering and deliberating over the fact that such a powerful king, but he is also taking effect from the Muslims, and he started looking into the beauty of Islam. And Allahu Akbar, it takes time. Allah is the giver of hidayah. When Muslims came on the occasion of Sulhul Hudaybiyyah, and they weren't allowed entry into Mecca. But then there was a truce, a peace treaty, a 10-year period of ceasefire. And also there were other clauses that you may not perform Umrah this year, but next year for three days only. And other clauses as well. The next year, before the Muslims arrived, Amr ibn al-As could not bear it that Muslims are coming. And he understands the truth. But he's confused. He said, I'm leaving Mecca. He then goes back to Abyssinia. When he arrives by Najashi, because he did have a prior good relationship with Najashi. Historically, Najashi was removed from his position and he was sent into the wilderness. But it re it's reported in some historic reports that on that occasion, when he was in the wilderness, seeing to a flock of sheep, when his people tried to kill him and Allah saved him because his uncle was put into control when Najashi's father, Ashama bin Abjar's father, the rightful ruler was killed. They didn't want Najashi to take revenge, so he was sent into the wilderness. But at that time he met the Arabs and he met Amr ibn al-As. Radiallahu anhu, and he did embrace it and, and he did learn the Arabic language at that time. So that was where their bond started. So when the Quran was recited to Najashi, he understood even before the interpreter. So this time Amr ibn al As returns to Abyssinia. He didn't want to be there when the Muslims come for their Umrah. But because he felt remorseful that he is deserting the Meccans whilst he was in Abyssinia. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent sahaba with letters inviting the different kings to Islam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's letter to Abyssinia was different because then the, the then Najashi was already Muslim. Ashama bin Abjar rahimahullah was already a Muslim. So the sahabi who arrived there arrived with a different message. Information about Islam, teachings of Islam and also Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at that time sent a letter prior to that proposing for the hand of Hazrat Ummu Habiba radiallahu anha in marriage. But this time Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's letter was also concerning other issues. Send my sahaba back to Medina Munawwara. Amr ibn al-As notices that the emissary of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being also Amr, Amr bin Umayya al-Dhamri arriving in Abyssinia Con conveying the letter and the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Najashi, Amr ibn al-As wanted to try again. He wanted to do something for the Meccans to actually help him overcome the remorse 
One is the remorse that he's not embracing Islam. The other is the remorse that he is forsaking the Meccans. So he spoke to Najashi, would you hand over to me the emissary of Muhammad sallallahu This is a favor I ask of you. If you hand him over to me, at least it will be something that I can do for the Meccans. So they don't take it out on me, the fact that I deserted them. Najashi says to Amr ibn al-As that how dare you make such a request, O Amr? What is wrong with you? And he smacked Amr on his face so severely that Amr felt such pain. He says, I, I like almost fell and I was so hurt that I, I, was, I actually felt I wish the earth could swallow me in. And then Najashi says to me, Amr, how dare you make such a request? Don't you know this is a man who has come from Allah's messenger? So this is Rasul of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa An emissary of the apostle of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa comes to me. And he deserves to be honored. And you actually have the guts. You muster up the courage. Yes, our relationship is in its place. But how dare you make such a request? which is disrespect to Allah's Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amr is thinking now that are you saying he is Allah's Nabi? Have you confirmed it? Are you sure? Najashi is telling Amr, I am assuring you, this is the Nabi of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amr ibn al-As then says, if you believe he is Allah's Nabi, I take your word for it. I also want to be a Muslim. Manli bihi. Who will make me Muslim? There and then Najashi holds the hand of Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu and Amr ibn As utters the kalima. Subhanallah. So here, yeah, interestingly, this is a beautiful riddle. If you ever asked, who is that Sahabi who embraces Islam at the hands of a Tabi'i? The answer would be Amr ibn al-As Anhu, because he uttered the kalima for the first time at the hands of Hazrat Najashi. Rahimahullah. Najashi was a tabi'i. He never met the messenger. Sallallahu so he's known as a very high level tabi'i called Mukhadram. A man who lived in the time of the Prophet وسلم, and embraced Islam but didn't meet him. وسلم, but he brought many to Islam. And the example we have before us is none other than Hazrat Amr ibn al-As. So he spent a little bit of time in Abyssinia but his heart was now yearning to meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and become Sahabi. So Amr ibn al-As thereafter undertakes this journey and he's, he wants to go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa but he is also worried, but he is determined. And he had embraced Islam already. So there's another report where he embraces Islam by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa which we will discuss shortly, but there he's renewing his Iman and he is acquiring Sahabiyyah, meaning Iman, and seeing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa with Iman. Subhanallah. So Allahu Akbar, Allah is the giver of hidayah. Allah then gave Hazrat Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu hidayah. When we look into the report, the report says he embraced Islam by Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa But what actually happened when we see the different reports? He first uttered the kalima by Najashi. And then he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi to renew his iman and acquire the position of Sahabiyyah radiallahu There's an interesting report where Hazrat Amr was asked radiallahu anhu that why did you delay your Islam? Why there was such a delay? Your son Abdullah had already embraced Islam. He said the problem is we, were, we had elders and they had high ambitions and whatever path they treaded on, we followed them in that same way. But when they refuted Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we also didn't think, we just followed our forefathers without even deliberating into the matter ourselves. But when they went away and we were then in charge, we looked into the matter closely and we found that it was very clear that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is on truth and that's when Islam permeated our hearts. نَظَرْنَا فِي أَمْرِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. فَإِذَا الْأَمْرُ بَيِّنٌ فَوَقَعَ فِي قَلْبِي الْإِسْلَامِ In Sahih Muslim, his incident is mentioned quite interestingly. 
He says there was no one who detested the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam more than me. لَقَدْ رَأَيْتُنِي وَمَا أَحَدٌ أَشَدَّ بُغْضًا لِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ And he says, if I had the opportunity to assassinate him, I would have done so without a doubt. But then Allah put Islam in my heart. So this is the part where he's discussing this way. Allah placed Islam in his heart and he started realizing. But the lesson for you and I is, subhanallah, Allah gives people hidayah in different places. Yeah, this effect he took was in Abyssinia, subhanallah. By the words of Najashi, a man from Africa. So Allah gives people hidayah in very mysterious ways. Najashi had and held such a high position. And he used his position to influence Amr. Radiallahu anhum. So we learn from here. Allah gives hidayah. We have to make an effort. And then through that effort, we will acquire Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's closeness. Just two days ago, I'm coming out of my home. And I see two men wait, two, two people waiting for me. So I got off the, off the car, I took out the key and I went to greet them. They said, no, we need to speak to you. So I said, no problem at all. Come in. And I called them in. I realized they're missionaries. And as, as I met, let them sit, I didn't ask if they wanted tea. I just went to the kitchen. I put on the kettle and I requested the wife to help me. And we put up something together. Because I know sometimes the Jehovah's don't want to take anything and they worried also. They want to give their message. They give a short message and they go on. And that's also their strategy, how they give everybody a message and they don't want to hear anybody else's message. But anyway, I learned from my brother because some years ago also, there were other missionaries going to all the stores in Newcastle. So in the town masjid, he mentioned that these people are coming right to you. They're making an effort. Yes, they have falsehood. But what they're doing, we were supposed to be doing. Now that they're coming right to us, let's not chase them away. Let's capitalize on the situation. So anyway, after they gave their message, and that's the other point I learned also, I let them speak first. Many a time, we, sometimes Allah forgive us, we chase them away. Is that the akhlaq of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa And then sometimes, they come to us, we want to talk to them as though we know so much. They came to us, now we want to talk to them without hearing them out. Their minds are closed. They came to convey a message. Allah's Nabi sunnah, is he heard them out. See how many times he went to the mushrikeen and he spoke to them. How many times they even came to him. Like Utbah bin Rabi'ah came to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with so many offers and so many uh, messages on behalf of Quraysh. Allah's Nabi heard him out. Even when he insulted Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, Oh Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you feel you insane or you lost it or you sick, we will arrange the best practitioners and physicians to treat you. And through all of that, Allah's Nabi heard him out. Carry on with your worship as you did before, but stop this da'wah. When he finished, Allah's Nabi Wasallam said to him very politely and respectfully, Afaragta ya Abul Walid. Sir, Abul Walid is a very respectful title. Like we would call an elderly man, uncle. Respectfully, politely, uncle. Are you finished? Now let me take my turn. So when they finish, then we take our turn. So they gave me their message. Afterwards, they wanted to leave. I said, no, I got tea coming for you. No, you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have. Anyway, I brought it quickly. I served them. Then in that, few others of their friends were also going through the other part of the street. They finished and they came looking for them. So I called them in as well. And I rushed, I rushed quickly to arrange the tea before they stopped me. And we learn from Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam in the Quran, فَرَاغَ ila ahlihi. He quickly went. رَاغَ يَرُوغُ is to quickly go like a fox. Meaning what that means in this context is don't ask if you want. Just go and bring what you want to give for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are opportunities to win over people to the truth. Anyway, I got speaking to them and... When they gave their message, I took my turn and explained about Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu wasalam from the Quran and from the Hadith and few amazing incidents also from the books of Seerah. Uh, uh, inspirational incidents in the life of Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And I noticed they all ears. And now after the ikram, after I heard them out, they were shocked. They actually said to me, you know, we've, we've been doing this Every day. They go into different areas every day. Then I'm remembering, Allahu Akbar, 
Hazrat Muhammad Yusuf Rahmatullahi's words. Allah, I complain to you that the Muslim is lazily sitting with his truth and the non-believer and the mulhid is actively spreading his falsehood. Allah, I complain of this plight to thee, Ya Rabbal Alameen. But after giving, making ikram, giving some message, telling them about the beautiful teachings of Islam wherever I could, and then also I mentioned to them that why is it that the Christian community Despite knowing that the Zionists hate Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, they call him illegitimate. And the Quran speaks so highly of him. How is it that the Christians, most of them, stand with the Zionists in Palestine? How is that so? Can't we see injustice? Now after I made, his, made the ikram, after I heard them out, I gave them a message like this so clearly. That even when I mentioned to them, look into this documentary Tantura of how the Zionists entered in the 40s and the 47. And here a Jewish man went and interviewed those who entered. This happened 30 years ago. Then this documentary was banned. And then it came out a few months ago. When I mentioned to them, and I know Jehovah's don't take anything you give them. But the strategy is to hear them out, make their ikram. Afterwards they feel obliged to hear you. Otherwise, they have to give their message quickly without hearing anything from you. They just want to preach and they carry on. But as I was speaking, I noticed they were making notes. So Allah's father from the seerah, the best way is with character and ikram and we give our message. Allah give us tawfiq. Hazrat Amr finally came. And as he was traveling to Medina Munumra, subhanallah, en route, he met two other very pertinent men. Great Sahaba, عنهم, but at the time they weren't Muslim. And they were none other than Hazrat Khalid bin Walid and the other being Uthman bin Talha. عنهم. Prior to this, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid was considering Islam. Nabi وسلم, came a, 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 a little while prior, a few months prior, to Makkah Mukarramah, and he looked for Khalid bin Walid. Nabi وسلم, came on the occasion of Umratul Qada and he asked for Khalid bin Walid. عنه, and then he left a message. He said, you know, if Khalid comes, we would really honor him. He's such a wise man. Hasn't he seen the truth yet? And then Hazrat Khalid bin Walid's brother, Walid bin Walid, who was inspired with Islam when he was capped and detained as a captive in Medina Manawara after the expedition of Badr. So from that time, he embraced Islam. So Walid bin Walid, radiallahu anhu, wrote letters to his brother Khalid bin Walid, radiallahu anhu. And he mentioned to him that Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mentioned you. And Allah's Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said this and that about you. And then he spoke to him. He addressed his brother so lovingly in that letter. So see Sahaba's mission. So amazing. When Khalid bin Walid got to know, Allah's Nabi asked about him. His heart was soft. He actually left Makkah during the Umratul Qada period because he didn't want to interact with any of the Muslims. The others were seeing the Muslims, interacting with the Muslims, and that automatically was an inspiration to them because now there was a peace treaty so they could talk to Muslims. And whenever Muslims t t spoke or interacted, they were honest, they were fair, they were kind, they were just, and Muslims gave da'wah. They did everything together and this became an inspiration. Why this was not possible prior? Because the, because the mushrikeen didn't allow this to happen. They didn't allow themselves to interact with Muslims. Now that they're interacting, and subhanAllah, today Allah gives us that opportunity. Let's be just, fair, loyal, be prompt in payment, be honest in our dealings, be honest when, when we're doing our sales, and also give the da'wah. This has a great impact in the, the effort of hidayah, in the spread of Islam. So Khalid bin Walid was, was, was inspired. Anhu. So he went to his friend Ikrimah. He calls Ikrimah over. And he mentioned to him when they spoke. They're very close friends. And in that, Hazrat Khalid mentions to him that, you know, my heart is softened towards this. I want to embrace Islam. Ikrimah gets worried. Oh, we've discussed the incident of Ikrimah. Allahu Akbar. It is available. And then when he got worried, he called the other senior mushrikeen and they all gather in the home of Khalid and they want to convince Hazrat Khalid that what your mind is telling you and what your heart is feeling is totally wrong you cannot consider Islam at the end Hazrat Khalid felt that these people are close to me I have to be honest with them that no I, I, I want to become Muslim and so forth then they realized that 
Khalid has seen the truth and he's not prepared to listen to them. Then they were about to take out their swords to end off Khalid bin Walid. Anhu. So then he used the strategy. He realized what they're going to end up doing. They're not prepared to tolerate him embracing Islam. He's one of their seniors. Just then Hazrat Khalid said, you know what? What you are saying is right. Let me reconsider. Let's think about it, you know, in the future. Let's leave it for now. What you are saying is right. And so forth. And he ended off the meeting, the discussion. And they all went away thinking, okay, Khalid is satisfied now that he's still with us and he's not against us and so forth. As soon as they left and they were, and he was out of their sight and they were far off. He then put together, put together whatever he needed to and he realized that they're going to make trouble for him. He was out of there. As he traveled, he stopped at a certain point. He sees Uthman bin Talha. Subhanallah. This is another very senior person. This is the man who was in charge of the key of the Kaaba. He was the same man. Subhanallah. When Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam prior in the Meccan stage, prior to Hijrah, wanted to enter the Kaaba, Uthman said, never. You want to enter the Kaaba, I'll never open for you. I'll never allow it. This man was a man of authority. But Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to him, but one day Uthman, I'm just telling you a prophecy. One day this key will be in my hand. Uthman said never. But anyway, the same Uthman from such a noble tribe, the Banu Abdiddar, the Banu Sheba clan, they were in charge of the key of the Kaaba Sharif. And up to today, this was also the prophecy of Janab Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa It remains in their hands. They open and close the door of the Kaaba Sharif. Anyway, Uthman and Khalid meet and each one is obviously now uncomfortable and none of them want to say the reason of their travel until Hazrat Khalid mustered up the courage that no, it is clear, it is clear. And then they meet Amr ibn al-As and you also here, they meet en route. And he also says it is too clear, the truth is clear. And the, tr- the three arrive in Madinatul Munawwara. Imagine Imagine this arrival. The three who were at the forefront of the effort of the forces of Batil. The three who were from the parliamentarians of Quraysh. The three who hindered Islam every step of the way. The three who led so many campaigns in trying to destroy Islam. Finally, they come. Imagine Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu. He was the mastermind in Uhud. When Muslims were winning, it was his maneuver. It was his strategy to go behind and attack the Muslims from the rear. So many sahaba became shuhada. So many children became orphaned. So many women became widowed. Imagine Amr ibn al-As who went right to Abyssinia. And he tried hard to get the Muslims back to Mecca to suffer torture again. Imagine Uthman bin Talha. He even refused our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa entry into the Kaaba Sharif. They arrive in Mecca in normal circumstances. Any other person, how would they have been treated? This is not ordinary. Ya Allah ka deen hai. This is Allah's deen. Ya Islam hai. Khuda ka deen hai. They come into Medina Munawwara. Allahu Akbar. And they are welcomed. They were never reminded that my father died because of you. No. Sahaba took it. That my father is shaheed. They never reminded others about their actions and the repercussions of their actions. When they came, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam welcomed them lovingly and he said to sahaba oh my sahaba look at this laqad alqat ilaykum makkatu aflada kabidiha makka has now given you a heart this is the heart of makka this is the heart of makka yeah these are the people who is allah bringing to allah's deen you and i must make an effort allah will guide people through us make an effort treat people with akhlaq Make people's ikram. Tell people the truth openly, directly. Talk about the beauty of Islam. Talk about the miracles of the Quran. Respected businessman, you can. How you describe that car, how you describe your, your commodity, your product, 
you got you got the charisma you got that articulate way use it for allah's deen allah gave you that ability invite and talk about the beauty of allah's deen you will inspire people today is jumua offer him He's there doing a business deal with you in your office. Tell him just now, come have some tea, have some biscuits. Just now, I'm going for Jumu'ah. I want to take you with me. And after that, we're going to have some biryani together. We're going to have some dal and rice together. We're going to have some acne together. Come, invite your friend. Offer him. You know him for so many years. They go. Such people arrive in Medina Munawwara. They are welcomed. They are accommodated. You know Why? because this is the effort of jannat this is the effort to save one one person from jahannam and take them to jannat when the same ikrima who tried to stop hazrat khalid hear his incident when he embraced islam allah's nabi his wife made an effort on him and as he was coming prior to his arrival allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to sahaba kiram radhiyallahu anhum this man is coming don't say anything bad about his father why hurt his feelings the man who's dead is gone the living is bringing iman why hurt the heart of the living this is the consideration of every person's heart and finally the three appear before janab rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and how he lovingly welcomed them and how sahaba embraced them and welcomed them lovingly this is the beauty of islam that the world is pining for the world is craving for the world is yearning for that love for allah but you and i as muslims are hoarding it for ourselves allah forgive us allah maaf farma de hame hazrat khalid comes forth embraces islam he holds the hands of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam takes the bay'a embraces islam hazrat amr ibn al-as radhiyallahu anhu comes forth but then he says fabasata yaminahu allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave me his hand but i held my hand back he said what's wrong amr ma laka ya amr so i said oh allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam I have a condition. What is your condition, Amr? So I asked, "Oh Allah's Nabi, that Allah forgive me. Allah forgive me." Allah's Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم said to Hazrat Amr, "Don't you know أن الإسلام يهدم ما كان قبله وأن الهجرة تهدم ما كان قبلها وأن الحج يهدم ما كان قبله." Don't you know that Islam, Subhanallah, through Islam, Allah forgives all one's past sins through Hijra. Hijra removes all one's past sins and Hajj Allah removes all one's past sins when Allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this Allahu akbar then Hazrat Amr was satisfied nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave him duas Hazrat Amr says and this is in sahih muslim wa ma kana ahadun ahabba ilayya min rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam first there was no one that i hated more now there was nobody more beloved to me than janabi rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam there was no one that i revered more than him wala ajalla fi aynayya minhu so much of respect i have for rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam i could never look in him and look him in in the eye i could never stare him in the face wa ma kuntu utiqu an amla aynayya minhu ijlalan lahu i could never stare at him or look at him in the face or look him in the eye out of awe for him even if i were asked to describe him i would be incapable wa law su'iltu an asifahu ma ataqtu because i never stared him in the face or looked him in the eye out of awe for him allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam loved them so much and our discussion is about amr what a position he held before the nabi of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said others bring islam and then iman comes thereafter aslam an nas wa amana amr ibn al as hazrat amr brings iman from day 1 And Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam also mentioned that Ibn al-As in Amr ibn al-As min salihi Quraysh Hazrat Amr ibn As is from the righteous men of Quraysh this is in Tirmidhi both of these reports are in Tirmidhi from the initial stages Allah's Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent him in Allah's way to strive for Allah subhanallah he just spent a short time learning Allah's deen he knew so much so so quickly two pertinent tasks allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave him right away one was subhanallah nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent him with a mission to give da'wah to the king of oman 
What an amazing journey and what an amazing message that in a few days he brought the entire country to Islam single-handedly. Another is Allah's Nabi will discuss that inshallah shortly. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sends him in an expedition and Allah's Nabi makes him Amir. Subhanallah. Hazrat Amr ibn al-As used to say in the expeditions, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa equated none to myself and Khalid radiyallahu anhum. He sent by Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa to that to Salasil. And amazing is Hazrat Abu Bakr and Umar and senior Sahaba radiyallahu are present in that expedition. Subhanallah. And Hazrat Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu is the Amir. And they're going in Allah Ta'ala's way. They numbered 300, 30 horses. Hazrat Amr went exactly as Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him. They traveled in the night and they hid in the day and they get to a certain place where the multitudes of the enemy were enormous. And Hazrat Amr ibn al-As writes to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sends reinforcements under the lead of Hazrat Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah radiyallahu anhu. As Hazrat Abu Ubaidah arrives, Hazrat Amr continued to be the Amir. There was a slight confusion where Hazrat Abu Ubaidah felt that Hazrat Amr would make him the Amir. Hazrat Amr said, Oh Abu Ubaidah, I am the Amir. You are my reinforcements. You just stay under me and do as I say. Hazrat Abu Ubaidah is a senior. He said to Amr, Oh Amr, if you want to be Amir, it's fine. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa told me to work together with you. If you go contrary to me, I will still listen to you. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa told us to work together. So Hazrat Amr was the Amir and Hazrat Abu Ubaidah submitted and prayed salah behind Hazrat Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu. What we learn from here, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa gave new brothers opportunities to progress and enhance and he appreciated their expertise to such an extent when they returned and the report was conveyed to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in the Kar Guzari one even mentioned this that the Amir didn't allow us to kindle fires and we were bitterly cold and Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him and when he gave his reason subhanallah Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so happy with Hazrat Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu that the enemy numbering so many mustn't know our exact number if we had fires they would be able to decipher exactly our number and even when the Muslims conquered and defeated Hazrat Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu doesn't allow them to follow them because he was anticipating that they had another troop of theirs in ambush. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa analyzed that Hazrat Amr radiallahu anhu wit and his wisdom in these expeditions was phenomenal. And Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept on sending him in Allah Ta'ala's way to establish Allah Ta'ala's deen. He even went into an area, subhanallah, where his mother hailed from. She was formerly a slave and so forth. And those were the tribe of his mother, and he went to make an effort on them. And some of these expeditions, Hazrat Abu Bakr was also with, but Hazrat Amr was the Amir. Imagine the greatest Sahabi is present, but he wasn't the Amir. This is the beauty of Allah's deen. One day one is Amir, the next day he is Ma'mur. Subhanallah. One day one is on Khidmah, the other day one is on God. This is the beauty, and this is the tarbiyat. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made for his sahaba kiram radiyallahu ta'ala anhum. Allah give us tawfiq to understand the amazing lives of sahaba kiram radiyallahu anhum. Hazrat Amr narrated many ahadith, more than 37 ahadith he himself narrated and shared with the ummah. So we are indebted to him in learning the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But there's so much more to his life. He left this world in the year 43 Hijri. We're just discussing few incidents that he had in the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The next discussion will be his journey to Oman. But what's amazing is all his life he continued serving and striving. We'll discuss what he said to the kings of Oman. And finally, Allahu Akbar, when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam departed from this world, he was saddened by it, Ya Allah. And Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu became the Khalifa. When Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu writes to him that Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent you on important errands, but I got important work for you. Are you prepared to comply and help? He responds to Hazrat Abu Bakr saying, Oh Hazrat Abu Bakr, Oh the Khalifa of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I am but an arrow from the arrows of Islam. Wa anta ba'dallah 
Rami biha. After Allah, you are the archer, you are our Amid, you are in charge. Please look into all your directions. The area that is most difficult and most furthest away and most challenging. Amir Saab, send me there, shoot me in that direction. I am an arrow in your hands. This is the caliber of the person we speak of. This is the man Allah's Nabi وسلم, saw his potential despite what he did in the past. He didn't know. And there's so many good people like this in the world. They don't know. Shake them up in wise words, with wise words. And Allah will make and use their potential for Allah's deen. When the new people embraced Islam just after Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they were so far away from the truth and far away from understanding and some Sahaba complained to Hazrat Abu Bakr. He said to them, tolerate them, teach them with patience. Remember Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's tolerance with us and how we became what we are. Tomorrow it will be them who will do our work and take our deen to the four corners of the world. Go easy with people. Be kind with people. Teach people. And see potential in every person. Allah will take great works from us. Allah give us tawfiq. We'll continue with Hazrat Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who left this world in Shawwal 43 Hijri. Wa sallallahu ala nabiya al-ummiya bi rahmatika ya arhaman rahimin. Please read three quls and send for him and the galaxy of Sahaba radiyallahu anhu.